Look at all that fuel there. Quarter tank of jetty in it. Beautiful. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to another one of my purchase videos. Now today we're going to have a look at a Mini. It is a Mini 1 edition, 2006 plate, and it's actually the 7 model. That was quite a rare old model, the Mini 1.7. 1.6 petrol, it's done about 130 odd thousand miles, but the best thing about this was the price. I bought this from auction, Aston Barkley, and it cost me £384 out the door. Yes, just 384 quid. An absolute bargain probably one of the cheapest minis that i've ever bought at auction that's actually running so what does 384 pound buy you well let's have a look at it go for a drive in it and have a look and see if we can actually maybe make some money out of this car so let's go and have a look at the mini right here it is guys the uh, mini one uh, mini one the seven edition 2006 plate uh, quite a rare thing this and also as well one of the last of this uh, model to carry the old engine in so they changed the engines on the uh, literally a few months later to the uh, what's called the later prince engines peugeot bmws all use it um 161.4 petrols and they ran pretty much all that 2014 they ran somewhere around there uh, but these were the original engines they used on this shape it's come out in 2001 and say route to about 2006 so this is a very very one of the last so this is one of the very last few ones with this engine in it's quite a good engine Engine, very robust uh, quite reliable uh, but we'll talk more about that in a minute but the car itself well as we can see it's a little bit scruffy uh, it's red so obviously we've got loads of lack appeal on it which is a real shame because it's what's really driving the price down on this car we'll have a look around it anyway it does want a little bit there in the front tires which we'll address in a minute i'll put some wind in them uh, but they said it's a horrible bonnet we've got lack appeal all over it typical red car this little mini area minis of this area they all seem to do this uh, the roof's gone the same as well it's all gone on the roof and that wouldn't bother me so much because the roofs i mean you won't want to get it roof painted to be honest because it's a bit of a faff but you can buy the sort of the sticker kits for them so you like check room or stuff like that we could put a union jack on it you could loads of ideas you could do to get a mini roof sorted uh, for very cheap money you can pick the sticker packs up for like 40 50 quid i've done that a couple of times so uh, that wouldn't bother me so much but the bonnet you'd have to do something with that um it's not very isolated it's completely gone the bonnet you'd have to have it repainted which is a big old task on a bonnet that size or try and find one that's an half better nick i mean the red was a common color but uh, most of them are like this i'm afraid so you have a bit of a challenge there trying to get that right Again, it's also gone at the top there, the skull panel area. It's all, it's all gone there as well. When we're going down the side, I mean, it's pretty straight panelish wise. Um, it's just again isolated bits of lacquer on the door, and obviously you've got a bit of fade in the paint. It's just how far you would go with trying to rectify this, and um, whether the budget would allow it. Wheels are quite good. Just want to clean up. They're not too bad. Tires are okay. All pretty much, all pretty legal. They're about four mil on the front, and even the rear ones aren't too bad. Stacking a few Lancel tires on there, which is a half decent budget tire. We've got a little bit of a ding there in the quarter at the bottom there, which is a shame. Again, lack of peel on again on the tailgate. It's just not looking good for this. Uh, got a, a broken light. Just the actual lens itself. I think the light actually still functions, but just the outer cover. I mean, you could get one of those. That's not really the end of the world. Down the near side, it ain't that bad actually. We've got a little bit of lack of peel going on the top in of the door, on the quarter side, and a little bit around the fuel cap. But again, you just see the roof, how bad that roof is. It's actually a real shame because the actual car itself, the, you know, the body of it, the wheels, the tyres, I mean, it's actually really quite nice. It's just this paint with it's so scruffy that's letting it down. But at the end of the day, guys, that's why it was 384 quid. You know, I can't really moan at 384 pounds. Even as scruffy as car as this, you can't moan for 384 pounds for a Mini that actually runs and drives. Right, we've got one key with it. Uh, central locking does not function on the key. Might want a battery. Uh, it does work on the door though, so it's not, I suppose it's an isolated issue with the fob. Interior wise, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, we've got a bit of wear on the seat, but it's 130 odd thousand miles, so uh, I'd expect it to be a lot worse than that, to be fair. Look at all that fuel there. Quarter tank of jetty in it. Beautiful. 136,000 miles we've done. So, We've done quite a few miles the old girl but i mean i've seen these with big miles on they, they are capable of doing it these are good engines these right let's uh start her up fires into life never in doubt we've got a warning light on the dash there we've got airbag light on would you believe engine light's gone out though and actually sounding wise engine sounds all right they're not bad engines these to be fair i actually quite like this old style engine 
I preferred it more than the later one, certainly. Uh, although they did have suffer with weak gearboxes, that is an issue with them. Uh, I've had a lot of these with whiny gearboxes go down the road and make an absolute racket. They used to be quite expensive to fix. I mean, they're not too bad now. If you can get someone to take the gearbox out, you can get them refurbed for, I think, about 300 quid mark. You can get them refurbed for if you send the box away. So they can be done. But uh, yeah, they were quite expensive back in the day to put right. But that is a common thing, gearboxes. Engine wise, pretty bulletproof, really. Uh, but we'll talk more about that one in a sec. Service history, we've got service history. Um, we've got service history up to 104,000 miles in the book. And then we've got a few invoices here. Uh, I've gone through it already. And we're basically covered up to 126,000 miles. Um, yeah, 124,000 miles, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, 124,000 miles. Big service ad, big full service, 258 quid's worth. Now, that was actually done a few years ago, in fairness, but it has only done about 12,000 miles since. So, you, you know, you might want another service if you want to go on with it again, but it has got history. I won't say it's full, but it's got some good history of it. Like I said, the stamps in the book there, I think we've got about six stamps. So, you know, you've got quite a bit there. It's not, it's not been unloved. Unfortunately, we don't have a V5 logbook, which is a shame because that is another kicking the teeth. Obviously, trying to sell it, you've got to wait around for a logbook. It's a bit of a pain, really. Like I said, if we're going to go on with it or do something with it, we might have to apply for a logbook potentially. That might be another reason why it was so cheap. In the back, it's not too bad actually. It's quite clean. It's all right. It's um, quite a pleasant thing. They say the interior is quite decent in it. You know, with radio working. Yeah, radio's working. I don't think it's tuned in. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Windows. I've noticed, actually, this window here is not working right. It's down as well. And if I uh, press the old uh, window button, we have a noise, but we have nothing going on. So we need to potentially look at that if we're going to fix it up and sell it. Other side is working, though, which is uh, something at least. Uh, what to look out for when you're looking at these? Now, from memory, steering was quite common for packing up on these. They have a sort of an electric column, if you like. Just basically make sure it's operating to turn it left to right. Make sure you've got steering function all that like that, because they were quite expensive to put to power steering racks on these, from memory. Should we have a look under the bonnet? There it is, guys, the old Chrysler-derived engine. Now, interestingly, these were actually supposed to have Rover K-Series engines in them. Uh, and thank God they didn't go down that route. And now, I'm a man of a... And I like Rovers. I'm not going not looking to slate them off. But, you know, even I would admit, a Rover fanatic, that the engines were a little bit weak. Uh, and they decided in the end, BMW, in their wisdom, this is when they still own Rover Group, go with an alternative engine. So they went with this engine. Uh, it was based from a Chrysler from memory. Um, I have no idea what Chrysler it was in, but it was in Chrysler's definitely. And it was made in Brazil, if I remember rightly. They assembled there and they sent them over to uh, the Europe where they were fitted, obviously in the car in uh, England. Uh, Cal I think it was the Cowley factory they used. Anyway, uh, that's the story of the engine. Like I said, very good, reliable engine. I've seen a few of egg gasket issues in the past, but it's usually for your abuse. They're not renowned for sort of failing, and certainly not on a Rover K-series territory. Other than that, they're quite good. Chain-driven engines, very reliable. They were a good engine, and I'm not quite sure why they decided to change them over to that later Prince engine. It was a bad move. I mean, I get why well, the, the idea was obviously more refinement, stuff like that, but the, the reliability just dropped off a cliff, really, with that later engine. Right, so we've had a quick look round it. We need to really go for a test drive because if it drives off right, it will help us in order to try to sell it on or find out at least what we're going to do with it. Can we sort of maybe look to rectify it or can we just sell it on as it is? We need to, the proof is in the pudding. So let's go and test drive it, see what it's like first and then weigh up what is the best option for this car. So let's rig up the tray plates and go for a drive. Right. Rigged up. Let's get her on the road. Right, the old Mini. So, what's it like? Well, setting off now, putting the foot down. It's actually all right, actually. Going through the gears all right, it's pulling okay. Clutch is a little bit high, I'd say. Um, it's probably gonna get towards needing a clutch soon, if I'm honest with you. Doesn't appear to be slipping, but it's not far off, I'll be honest with you, because it is quite high. I have actually just noticed as well, the airbag warning light is staying on. Um, now, when I picked it up at the auction, it's gone off, and I just noticed before when we were filming that it was staying on, and it still stayed on again. So I'm wondering if it's something to do with this seat, because I've moved it back in two a few times, and it's come on and then gone off and come on again. Anyway, we could scan that and have a look at it, potentially. Suspension-wise, well, if I'm going over the bumps now and over the sleeping policeman, etc., it's not too bad. 
Um, I can't really any noise, any ball joints or anything like that. No knocks or bangs or broken springs. All seems all right. It is a little bit noisy in here, but that's probably down to the fact the wind is not closing properly, so I've got a little rucker road noise. But I have to say, as far as minis go, it's driving reasonably okay. These minis are sort of hard on the suspension. They're not really very forgiving, if I'm honest with you. They do have very taut suspension, but in fairness, they are fun to drive and they are quite zippy. I mean, this is only just a baby one six petrol model, but in fairness, it does pull rather well. It's no slouch. I say it's changing gear quite nice. We haven't got any wines in the box as well, which is good. I'm actually quite pleased with it. It certainly drives better than it looks. Now, if you're gonna buy one of these, what you'll be looking out for? Well, from my experience, uh, like I said, you want to make sure you're going to be going out to drive, test drive it, you're looking at the gearbox issues, make sure you've got no wines, make sure you get it up to temperature, make sure it's not overheating or anything like that, because like I said, head gasket issues, we're not saying they were common, they were a thing you have to be aware of, so make sure that the fan's kicking in and it's staying nice and cool and not going past the sort of halfway mark on the gauge. Be wary of the steering issues, make sure the steering system's working, the electric motor, because if that fails, it could be big bucks to repair it. So what are these like when it comes to MOTs? Well, my experience, not very good, to be honest with you. They do suffer with a few issues. They're very difficult to get for an MOT test, the minis of this era. The things I used to come across were front suspension arm bushes on the, on the subframe. They were really common for going, always failing, knocking and banging. You usually hear them when you're driving, you'll hear a bit of a FUD at the front end. It's usually down to them front suspension bushes. You can replace them, they're readily available. One of the things that's quite common that people do is they can poly bush them out. Things to solve the problems forever. Rear calipers, they can seize up. They're really common on MOT tests for failing. Mainly the rear ones, but you get the odd front one that goes a bit funny as well. Um, again, they're not too dear to fix. You can pick them up for reasonable money now for rear calipers. Also check for corrosion above the fuel tank that can go there. I've seen a few where the rear arms can go a bit manky, particularly with, older, particularly with age. But again, all these bits are sort of readily available. But in fairness, people like the Mini, they're a good car, they drive well, and I completely understand the attraction of why people want them and people why people buy them. So the question is, what should we do with this Mini? <sighs> well, where do we start with this? Look, for 384 quid, I am not complaining because it's not a case of will we make money on it, it's just thinking about what's the best way to extract money out of it. Do we go down the route of fixing it all so we get the roof sorted out? Do we get the bonnet painted? Do we get the little bits of lacquer done on it? Or do we leave some of those bits and just get the main bits done? Where do you go with it? You'd have to fix the window. We'd have to look at this airbag situation. We're going to have to get underneath it and check it all over. We've got to weigh up whether or not we're going to open a can of worms up with this. Or maybe is it just better just to maybe flip it on as it is and just get a little bit of profit out of it and let it become someone else's problem? And I've made my decision. And would you believe it? I've decided that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm just going to trade it on as it is. Now, it's not the case that I don't want to sort of fix this up and sell it on for good money. It's probably worth 15, 16, 95 on a car pitch. But to be honest with you, it's just not really viable at the moment. I haven't got the workshop facilities that I want. I've got a lot of cars backed up. I need to get stuff ready. I've got a lot of cars that are nearly ready. I've got small jobs that I need to get on the pitch. And I don't really need this lying around. If I have it in the corner of the pitch, it's sort of waiting to be done. It won't get touched for months, I know. And then the more faults will develop as it's been sat around. To be honest with you, I think sometimes your first profit could probably be your best profit. There is no doubt that probably fixing this up, probably a few hundred quid, probably we could get it locking half decent again. Maybe get the bonnet painted, get a sticker pack on the roof. It'll make it look 10 times better. Get it for an MOT. We might be able to get 1,500 quid for it, maybe. Who knows? But it's the time. We don't have that time at the moment, that luxury. I need to focus my efforts on other things. And I think that, like I say, the best thing to do with this is just to flip it on as it is, make a quick profit out of it, and then move on to the next one. So that is exactly what I'm going to do with this one, guys. I'm going to flip it on. I've got a few guys already I know who will probably buy this off me as it is. Like I said, if we can get 100, 150 pounds profit out of it, I think someone will give 500 pounds for this all day long. Maybe we might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of someone who knows because it actually does run and drive, it functions. It's even got an MOT still on it, so someone could actually carry on using it. And then, if they wanted to, they could just bin it off afterwards or fix it up or even fix it up at a later date. So, either way, the cheapest mini that I've ever bought will still turn me a profit. And at the end of the day, that's the name of the game. That's what we're about. Buying cars, turning around, selling them on and making a little bit of money. So let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. What would you have done? Would you have fixed it up or would you just sell it on as it is? So thank you for watching this one, guys. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I've got new videos coming out every week, including some auction videos coming out very soon. So please make sure you check them out. Uh, thank you for watching again and I'll see you all in the next video.